you know you can help find aliens? SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, has a program called SETI at Home. And no, this doesn't mean they come search your home for little green men. It means that you allow them to use your computer to crunch data. The idea is pretty brilliant. Instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on supercomputers to crunch all this data that they're collecting throughout the universe, they distribute the processing throughout computers all around the world. You go to their site, you download this program, and it lets them use your computer for processing when you're not using it. It basically turns the entire internet into a giant supercomputer. But what if there was a job so big that every computer in the world couldn't handle it? Imagine if we could turn our entire solar system into a computer. Patreon patron Alex Thompson wrote, I found the concept of a Matryoshka brain absolutely fascinating. I know you've touched on this before, but a more detailed video on the topic might be interesting. In past episodes, I talked about the Kardashev scale as a way to classify potential alien civilizations on the amount of energy that they consume. A type two alien civilization, for example, would be able to capture all the energy out of their home star. A popular idea to collect all the energy from a star is something called a Dyson Sphere or a Dyson Swarm. Basically a giant solar array large enough to encircle an entire star. It's an ambitious idea to be sure, but in 2008, futurist Robert Bradbury took it a step further in a book called Year Million, Science at the Far Edge of Knowledge. He basically asked if we're using all the energy from the sun, then what the hell are we using it for? I mean, I know Pokemon Go eats up your battery life, but damn. He proposed using a Dyson Sphere to power a giant supercomputer. And not just one sphere, but multiple spheres packed inside each other. He called it a Matryoshka brain. Matryoshka, Matryoshka, Matryoshka? Matryoshka. Matry, Matryo... Hmm. Let's see how they say it online here. <laughs> Matryoshka. 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 That's what I'm going with. <laughs> Named after the famous Russian nesting dolls where one doll is nested inside the other one like so. It's a Dyson Sphereception. The idea is that each sphere would take in energy from the sphere below it and radiate out energy to power the sphere above it. So the most inner sphere would be almost as hot as the sun itself, while the outer sphere would be almost the same temperature as interstellar space. Literally capturing every watt of the sun's energy. And that's a lot of watts. Four by 10 to the 26th power kind of watts. And since it captures every single amount of energy from a star from a distance, it would look like this. Nothing. Now this is known as a Class B stellar engine, basically an engine that derives all of its energy from a star, in this case, powering a massive computer. A Class A stellar engine, if you're wondering, is propulsive, meaning it actually moves the sun and the entire solar system across space. An example of this would be something called a Shkadov thruster, which is basically a giant sail that would reflect all the light one direction, propelling the entire solar system in another direction. Wait a second, Matryoshka brain, Shkadov thruster, Kardashev scale. We're just all kinds of rushing up in here. Matryoshka. So you might be wondering, what would happen to all the planets if you built these giant spheres around the sun? Yeah, they'd have to go. I mean, these spheres aren't gonna build themselves. The most likely scenario would be that we would create robots that would fly to the planet Mercury and mine it, taking it apart piece by piece for materials to create the first sphere. But they aren't just building spheres, they'd be making more of themselves as well. Self-replicating robots would build and grow with the project. So while it may start kind of slow, it would grow exponentially. Once the first sphere comes online, we would use that energy to build the next sphere, dismantling Venus and going outwards from there. Basically, we'd come to a point where we'd say, those planets are pretty, but mama needs some cheddar. Let's mine them. By the way, if you think that mining the solar system sounds crazy, guess what? We're already doing it, or planning to do it anyway. Billionaire entrepreneur Peter Diamandis created a company called Planetary Resources with that specific goal of mining asteroids. They've already got about a dozen asteroids in their sights and several satellites have been designed to do that job. And last year, President Obama signed the U.S. Space Launch Competitiveness Act, which recognizes the rights of private enterprises and people to own asteroid resources. So give it another few thousand years and Mercury's pretty much a goner. I mean, what's it done for us lately? And finally, what kind of civilization would build a Matryoshka brain? And where would they live without any planets? Well, here's where it gets a little bit crazy. Because a computer as powerful as a Matryoshka brain would be able to simulate entire universes. So where would that civilization be? In the computer. A civilization that's building a Matryoshka brain isn't just building a megastructure. They're creating their entire reality. 
a reality that they then upload their consciousnesses into. This runs completely counter to the idea that we've always had of like super intelligent civilizations that are spanning the universe and transversing galaxies. This is a civilization that's decided to go inwards, to build a literal bubble around itself and live inside of it. It's the ultimate tune in, turn on, drop out. Which, like any simulation argument, begins to beg the question, how do we know we're not living in a Matryoshka brain? I will say, I don't think human beings will ever really go the Matryoshka brain route. I think that exploration is just a part of our DNA. It's always been there, and I think we will always be the type of civilization that wants to go outwards. I don't know, to me the idea that we would just completely shut the rest of the universe out and go within seems incomprehensible to me. I'm pretty sure the future beings that would go this route wouldn't be us. They'd be something else, something that followed us. Something that with all of their super advanced intelligence and understanding of the universe have looked out there and decided that there's nobody out there to talk to, nothing to see, and no meaning to any of it. Just an empty, lonely, pointless void. So they created their own universe. Which, come to think of it, is a pretty human thing to do. So what do you think? Do you think there are any civilizations out there living in their own little cosmic bubble? Do you think we're in one ourselves? Discuss. In last week's video on artificial intelligence and consciousness, Legion of Weirdos commented, People who are aware under anesthesia is extremely rare but possible. When it happens, it usually means the paralytic has been given, but the sedating drug hasn't. Okay, so any anesthesiologist watching this, please don't do that. Legion of Weirdos, by the way, is an awesome YouTube channel. I met them at VidCon. Check it out. Salem AJ commented, I love your content, even though sometimes I find it a bit depressing because there seems to be no answers or actual explanations to the stuff you discuss. Yeah, I probably should change the name of the channel to Questions with Joe because most of the stuff I talk about have no real answers. But don't be depressed. It's all good. Stefan Steinberg said, Maybe consciousness, thought, and choice are just a series of events happening so quickly we can't notice that it's actually in an unlimited sequence. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going with it. I think we experience the world as this never-ending now. We're always in this one particular now state. In fact, everything that I just said is now in the past. Like, we're always in this moment, this sliver of time that seems to be progressing forward. That could be a whole different video, actually. Mark House said, Recently there's been a case of a person through some kind of problem of the brain, lost most of the central parts of the brain, and now only has about 10% of it, yet still lives the normal life of a father of two. Yeah, I've heard some stories like that, of people who have, uh, it's not hydrocephaly, but it's basically the inside of the brain is just liquid. There's no gray matter there, and the only gray matter they have is around, you know, the outside of the brain, the, the surface area of it, and yet still live normal lives, which really brings a lot of questions up. It's a very interesting topic. Devin Bloke said, Hey Joe, did you see the Hammeroff interview where he said that cryonics would destroy the microtubules? Great, that was my backup plan. Wish I hadn't watched it now. I haven't heard that. And cryonics is actually something that's really fascinating to me. So that's a bummer. Big thanks to Alex for supporting this channel on Patreon. If you guys would like to join it, you can just go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe and get your questions answered and join in the fun. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Please hit like if you did. If it's your first time here and you liked it, please hit subscribe because I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. If you want to start a chain reaction of mind blow, then you can share this on social media or you can follow me at Answers with Joe at any of these down here below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now go out there and have an eye-opening week and I'll see you next time. Love you guys.